Uh, we'll be in uh, Deuteronomy. And let's go to Romans first. Uh, Romans. Uh, I want to be clear. There are people who we don't agree on everything with, and they are false prophets. Um, there, there's, there's people who there's differences. They're minor, and and we just we don't see it eye to eye. We can joke, we can laugh, we can even have a friendly, you know, family debate there on it. It's no big deal. But then there's outside the realms of of the fundamentals of basic Christianity, and uh, and then um, there comes an issue because they are saying things that determine people's eternity. That's wrong. <clears throat> okay, let me illustrate it this way. Um, if I if I said, uh, "Hey, go meet me in Twin Lakes," and uh, so um, one person says, "Well, the best way to Twin Lakes is to go down 99." Another person said, "Go down 95." Another person says, "Take 509." Another person says, "Take Dash Point." Okay, okay, no big deal. They all get you to Federal Way, right? No big deal. We can all debate on which way is the fastest. No big deal. And and that's there, there's a lot there's there's a lot of Christians who are who are fine and and we're friends and there's little differences and and things like that. We're, we're brothers and sisters in Christ. We get along good. We're on the same team. But then there's things that act like Christianity, but are taking you off a cliff instead of to Twin Lakes. And uh, and then you got to say, well, don't tell me to drive down that road. That road is, uh, that that's that's taking you on the bombing field of Fort Lewis. Uh, that's not, that's not right. That's not where, where we're supposed to go. That's not safe. And, and so, uh, we're, we're, we're continuing this week on Jehovah's Witnesses. And why do we, why do we point out false prophets and, and, uh, why do we do these things? Romans chapter, <clears throat> um, 16 and verse 17, it says, I, be, I beseech you, brethren, mark them, which cause divin- divisions and, and, uh, let me read that again, cause divisions and offenses, uh, Contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. Jesus said uh, they come as wolves in sheep's clothing. And that's the danger, is the wolves are going to devour the flock, and that's what the Bible says they'll do. And so we have to warn them. And um, and I told you, again, we had some one of our people um, didn't, doesn't speak super good English, and I found the Jehovah's Witnesses there, and the Jehovah's Witnesses left. I said, do, do you know who those people are? They said, oh, they're just Christians who just want to read the Bible with me. I said, no, they're not. They're acting like that, because they always do. And by the way, why well, be deceptive if you're not doing something wrong? And I said, uh, no, they're, they're not. They don't believe in the resurrection of Christ. They don't believe in uh, the deity of Christ. They don't believe in heaven. They don't believe in hell. They don't, uh, every essential doctrine they're wrong on. And, uh, and they're trying to convert you. Um, and, uh, and, and they're very shocked. And, and so that's why we do this to help identify those things so we can know. When a guy comes on the TV and he's a TV preacher and he's teaching false doctrine, but he acts like he's Christian, and there's there are some of those. Then we need to know who those are and and know know that um, not not that there's a little difference or maybe a little quirky, but I mean they're teaching flat out uh, heresy. Then then we, then the Bible has a lot of that where you prepare for that, and so you want to go to that. And so um, let's go to uh, Deuteronomy chapter eighteen. We'll get into back into our lesson in just a minute, but I want to kind of give a little context things we didn't get into last week. <clears throat> Deuteronomy 18, let me read that to you. Deuteronomy 18 and uh, verse uh, 20, God gives instructions of how to know a true prophet and false prophet. Verse 20, but the prophet which shall presume to speak the word in my, a word in my name which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. So God's very serious about this, okay? But how are we supposed to know if he's a true prophet? Because they didn't have the Bible. This is Deuteronomy. The Bible's not written yet. So you say, well, how are we supposed to know if they're a true prophet or not? And so God tells him, And if thou wilt say in thine heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord hath not spoken? Then when a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if that if the thing follow not nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken. But that prophet has spoken it presumptuously, and uh, thou shalt not be afraid of him. So real easy. And, and there's other passages, but very easy. How do you know false prophet? Uh, one of the ways before you had the Bible was uh, if they say God says something and it, and they give a prophecy and it doesn't come to pass, they're a false prophet. Biblically, a prophecy has to be 100%. A prophet, if he has one false prophecy, see, God isn't in error. If they're a prophet of God and speaking for God, if they say, look, uh, rain's going to come in six days, and rain doesn't come in six days, the Bible says take him outside and kill him. He's a false prophet because God's never wrong. 
and uh, and that's that's what you do. And so uh, that's how you know is whether their prophecies always come true, and when they say that's going to happen. <clears throat> and so um, that is uh, is what you have now. Um, so we see these things, and that's how we how we know these things. Now, a, a little bit of uh, of history. <clears throat> Um, Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, they're, they're, they've had two different original leaders. Uh, does somebody have those? Uh, did I take these back? You, we still have those. Can you take those back to Michael or somebody in the back so people who come in can get them? There we go. All right. And anybody who comes in late, they can grab one of those. And uh, so so there, there was a couple people. One was named uh, Rutherford. One was named Russell. And uh, they were the founders. They were pretty far apart. One took over uh, for the second one, um, but they were uh, the same group of people. And uh, and they came in. A lot of false doctrine, understand this, false prophets and false doctrine a lot of times comes in in prophecy. Um, there's several reasons for that. Is One, um, cults have to control you. And uh, if they scare you, they can control you. Okay? And two, it's very easy to make prophecy more than anything else in the Bible say whatever you want it to say. Why? Because prophecy is an allegory. It's, Revelation is a book of many allegories and many pictures. And so you can, you can uh, when the Bible's not saying, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, when it's just saying simple, pure doctrine, it's easy. When you talk about the, the, the ten horns on the seven heads on a beast uh, that has... Uh, that's red and and rides this and and the woman is riding it and she is like this. Then you've got a lot of symbolism as, as prophecy does, and so that you can make all of a sudden all these things, and 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 you can discover things and and show people stuff and what the picture means because because you can do that prophecy very easy if you don't just take all the regular scriptures that are easy to understand and, and put them all together. And so they they oftentimes do that. So Jehovah's Witnesses started on prophecy. That's where their their false teachers started on. <clears throat> And they started making a bunch of predictions and scaring people and saying, hey, we, we've only got so much time. And so let me just give you, I'm just going to read to you some of the the, the, the prophecies, the Watchtower, which is their their magazine, has uh, has made. And uh, and uh, just show you what they say. <clears throat> um, they said that they were, they, they became God's, uh, they became God's anointed. Now, here. This is very, very important here. Let me read the prophecies. Let me get, I'll get back, back to that in a sec. I want to show you the problem here, but let me just uh, read you just prophecies from the Watchtower directly. Uh, again, Jehovah's Witnesses don't know this because they're not allowed to know about this. Uh, they can't read anything that doesn't uh, the Watchtower doesn't agree with, agree with nor can they even uh, look at the history of the Watchtower. They're not allowed to do that. They can't do a history search and find out what the Watchtower says. Um, and I told you about the guy I know. Um, who, who's, who has an old watchtower where they said Jesus is on earth, and uh, they won't look at it. He'll show it to them, this is your watchtower. And they're like, I don't, anyway, let's talk about something. And they won't even look at it because they're not allowed to. And it's their watchtower. <laughs> and uh, and the watchtower organization is, uh, has had a lot of prophecies. So I'll just read you a bunch of, these are direct quotes in the watchtower. Um, 1894, a few more years will be the end of the present order of things. And th- then the chastened world will stand to face face to face with the actual conditions of the established kingdom of God, and yet the course of the church is to be finished within the space of, of time that intervenes. And that's Watchtower, 1894, page 56. Um, we see no reason for the change, this is 1894, for the change in the figures, nor could we change them if we would. They are, we believe, God's dates, not ours. We bear in mind that at the end of ni- 1914 is, uh, that, that, Bear, but bear in mind, the end of 1914 is not the date for the beginning, but for the end of the time of trouble. Um, let's see. Um, 1897. Complete destruction of the powers that be of this present world, of this present evil world, political, financial, ecclesiastical, ecclesiastical, about to close to uh, of the time of the time of the Gentiles, uh, October A.D. 1914. And so they're just setting dates and doing all that stuff. Uh, 1897, our Lord, the appointed king, is now present since October 1874 A.D. And the formal inauguration of this kingly office date uh, from April 1878 A.D. Again, those are all, all things watch, the Watchtower has said. And uh, one of the funny things, they said Jesus will come back on this date, and then the date happened, and they said, um, it was a spiritual coming back. 
and 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 it started, and uh, and and now it'll just be a few more years, and he'll actually take over everything. But we just can't see him. But he's here, and uh, and it is, and eventually, even even Jehovah's Witnesses are splitting over their their date setting. Um, 1897, our Lord, the appointed King, is now present since October 1874. 1899, the battle, of the great day, of the Almighty God, Revelation 16:14, which will end in AD 1914, um, with the complete overthrow of the Earth's present rulership, has already commenced. 1916, the Bible chronology here and presented shows that the six great thousand-year days beginning with Adam are ended, and the great seventh day, the thousand-year reign of Christ, began in 1873. By the way, does it look like Christ is back on earth and the world is in paradise? <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, let's see, um, 1918, therefore we may confidently expect that 1925 will mark the return of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob with the faith, the and the faithful prophets of old, particularly those named by the apostles in Hebrews 11, to the condition of human perfection. Uh, in their pamphlet, Millions Now Living Will Never Die. Uh, 1922, the date 1925 is even more distinctly in, uh, indicated by scriptures than was 1914. Uh, 1923, our date, our date is that 1925 is definitely settled by the scriptures. As to Noah, the Christian now has much more upon which to base his faith than Noah did upon which to base his faith at coming to lose. 1925. The year 1925 is here with great expectation. Christians have looked forward to this year. Many have confidently expected that all members of the body of Christ will be changed into the heavenly uh, glory during this year. 1925. uh, It is expected that Satan will try to inject into the minds of the consecrated the thought that 1925 should see an end to the work. September, the Watchtower, 1925. Page 262. 1926, some anticipated the work would end in 1925. This is 1926. But the Lord did not state so. (laughs) It is difficult. Uh, The difficulty was that the friends inflated their imagination, imaginations beyond reason, and that when their imagination burst asunder, they were inclined to throw away everything. What happened is when it didn't happen and they were all ready for it, the Watchtower split in about four schisms. Because they said, hey, this didn't happen like you said. And so they said, well, you just had too much expectation. We didn't really say that. And uh, 1931, there was a measure of disappointment on the part of Jehovah's faithful ones on earth concerning the years 1917, 1918, and 1925, which disappointment lasted for a long time. And they also learned to quit fixing dates. (laughs) Now he blames the members. Oh, brother. Uh, uh, 1941, receiving the gift, the marching uh, children uh, clasp it to them. Uh, not a toy or plaything of idle pleasure, but the Lord's provided instrument for most effective work in remaining months before Armageddon. 1968, true, there have been those in time past who predicted the end of the world, even announcing a specific date. Yet nothing happened. The end did not come. They were guilty of false prophesying. Why? What was missing? Missing from such people were that God's truths and evidence that He was that He was using and guiding them. Um, so they, they, now they say there used to be people who used to predict the times. Well, the Jehovah's Witnesses can't look back and see that it was them. <laughs> and so, and so, uh, 1968. Why are you looking forward to 1975? It's not going to happen. Uh, Watchtower, uh, August 15, 1968, and so forth. So you see, uh, it's been full of that. 1975 was another year when they started predicting everything and. And so that's, you see the, the false prophecy there. The problem, here's the problem. And, and <clears throat> so I talked to Jehovah's Witness yesterday and, and, uh, and I said, I said to her, I said, uh, uh, what's that? Here's the thing. They will act like, and, and you will catch this if you start talking to them. And, and again, it's very difficult to talk to them. And, and let me say this very clearly. You will find it much, much different talking to a Mormon or a Muslim then you will a Jehovah's Witness. You'll find it much more frustrating to talk to a Jehovah's Witness than any other. You can talk to a Hindu, much easier. You can talk to a Mormon. You can talk to a, a, a Muslim. You can talk to a, a Buddhist. You can talk to... You'll find it much less frustrating than Jehovah's Witness. They are very difficult to speak to, and, and for a lot of reasons. And it's honestly because they're completely brainwashed. And, uh, and they're robots. And, and it's very difficult. And the one I was talking to yesterday... Uh, I, I said, she says, oh, um, I said, uh, well, I, you know, uh, I, I, I like, oh, she says, I'm a Jehovah's Witness, and, and we studied the Bible. And I said, well, look, I like to study the Bible with you, look up some scriptures about some things. And she says, I'm a Jehovah's Witness. We're the ones who study the Bible. 
And uh, because because they have that arrogance to them, they, they think that they're the only ones. And, and I'll read to you why that is. And I'm, gonna, I'm not exaggerating. They believe that the Watchtower is God's only ordained channel of truth to us. If you're not doing what the Watchtower says, you can do the Bible, you can do anything else you want, you are wrong. And I said to you, okay, great. I said, you studied the Bible, that's great. What's that name of every name? She says, Jehovah. And, and, and Jehovah is God's great name. And I said, I said, great, can we just read go up with Scripture in Philippians 2? No, that's okay, I don't need to. I said, well, how about you read Philippians 2 on your own and just look and see what the name above every name is because it says the name of every name is Jesus, okay? And uh, no, that's okay. I don't want to do that. And I said, you don't want to read the Bible? She says, no, I, I, already, I already read the Bible. I, I, I'm a Jehovah's Witness. I study the Bible. I already know the Bible. I studied the Bible. I said, okay, then you have no problem reading Philippians 2, right? I said, why don't you give me a Scripture to read and I'll read it also. No, that's okay. I'm not going to do it. Click. <laughs> because, because the Watchtower has taught them it's not the Bible. And they'll say the Bible's our authority, but they have to look at the Bible through the lens of the Watchtower. It is, and, and I'm not, that's an exaggeration. It's they have to. It's what they say. And, uh, and, and so, um, <clears throat> And so let me, let me read you. There's a parable in, in, in Luke 12 and, and Matthew 24, and it talks about the faithful servant, and uh, they call it the faithful and discreet slave. And uh, what they believe is, in, 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 and they say it started 1919 is when the Jehovah's Witnesses started. They didn't start then, okay, but, but that's, that's kind of what they're told is they started in 1919. And what happened is uh, 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 their leader, uh, he basically, uh, and the watchtower, um, God said to them, you are the only ones, and now you are my faithful servant to give the truth to the whole world. Nobody else has a truth. And, uh, and so they say they're the faithful slave. And so, <clears throat> and, uh, and uh, who is that faithful and discreet servant to whom the, the, the master is appointed over his business? It's that, faith, that servant he'll find so doing. That's, that, and they say that means that there is a faithful servant. That faithful servant is God's messenger for the world, and nobody else will have that. That's the only person that God's going to speak through. And uh, and so uh, that's what they believe. Now, let me just read to you the quotes from the Watchtower about that, and it shows that they think they're the only ones. Uh, let's see. Um, the faithful slave is the channel through which Jesus is feeding his true followers in this time of the end. It is vital that we recognize the faithful slave. Our spiritual health and our relationship with God depend upon this channel. Watchtower 2013. Okay. Um, next, the faithful and discreet slave was appointed over Jesus uh, domestics in 1919. This slave is a small composite group of anointed brothers serving at uh, world headquarters. By the way, it's not all Jehovah's Witnesses, understand. They don't even know how many it is, but there's a group in Brooklyn, New York, where the Watchtower is headquartered. They don't know who they are. They don't know how many they are, but they're there. And they are God's anointed. They are the faithful servants. And, and they will tell us. They tell every, every kingdom hall, every single lesson that we taught this week, and every, anywhere in the world, doesn't matter if it's Bulgaria or Bolivia or, or Boston, they'll all be teaching the same exact lesson. Okay? Sent from headquarters. And, uh, and they'll be teaching that. Um, this small and composite group of anointed brothers serving at world headquarters during the Christ presence uh, who, who are directly involved in preparing and dispensing spiritual food. When this group work together as a governing body, they act as, quote, the faithful and discreet slave. Uh, next, we need to obey the faithful and discreet slave to have Jehovah's approval. Watchtower 2011, page 15, or uh, July 15, page 24. Uh, since Jehovah and Jesus Christ completely trust the faithful and discreet slave, w- should not we do the same? It's just different quotes. Um, a mature Christian does not advocate or insist on personal opinions or, uh, to harbor uh, uh, private ideas when it comes to Bible understanding. Rather, he has complete confidence in the truth as revealed by Jehovah through God his Son, Jesus Christ, and the faithful and discreet slave. Watchtower 2001. But Jehovah God has also provided this visible organization, his visible organization, his faithful and discreet slave made up of spirit anointed ones to help Christians of all nations to understand and apply properly the Bible in their lives. Unless we are in touch with this channel of communication that God is using, we will not progress along the road of life, no matter how much Bible reading we do. You see why? 
you can take the Bible and show them, and they say, that's fine. No, 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 no. doesn't matter um, because you're not the channel. It doesn't matter. You can't be right because only the channel, only that organization has God's truth. Follow respect for the faithful and discreet slave. He is using it at the present time. Actually, your very life depends on following the course of this action. Remember, too, it is only he that endures the end and will be saved. Watchtower. Uh, to, uh, to act consistently with our baptism for life and into the, greater, uh, into the greater Noah, we must submit to and cooperate with that slave and its legal instrument, the Watchtower Society. I mean, we could read on and on. So that's what, what the problem is, is right there. Is, is they have that. Now let's compare this in Acts. Let me read Acts 17. So let me state really super clearly here. The Bible says, 1 John 2, you need not that any man teach you, but the same anointing teaches you of all things. And is the truth. The Holy Spirit, John 14, 26, will lead and guide you into all truth. You can read the Bible with the Holy Spirit of God inside of you and understand it perfectly. And if I say something that disagrees with the Bible, I'm wrong. And God and the Holy Spirit and the Word of God are right. And that's biblical. Let me show you how that's done in Acts. And just, again, just, just one example of it. The apostles, okay, mind you, the people who would live with Jesus, the anointed apostles by Jesus Christ personally, were preaching the gospel, okay, in Acts 17. In verse 10, it says, And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night into Berea, who coming thither went to the synagogue of the Jews, and they were more, these were more noble than those of Thessalonica, and that they received the word of God with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. <laughs> they searched the scriptures to see if what the apostles were telling them were true. Okay? And so... And so that is the thing. So all that to say, it's very difficult. Um, what I tend to do with Jehovah's Witnesses, like I said, I've only had a couple of them converted, but I've talked to them who have been, when I meet a, a, a saved Jehovah's Witness, and I, and I do uh, meet them sometimes, and we've had several in our church and things, and I say, what changed things? And so I've, I paid attention to them and, and what they say impacted them. And uh, many of them say you have to discredit the Watchtower. Just showing the Bible is not going to convince them. Now, I still believe the Bible's the two-edged sword, and it, it'll shake them. Um, but uh, one of the things we put down here, if you want to you want to help them, we want to help them, we want to reach them, their precious souls, they need to be saved, and many are saved, but it's very difficult. And uh, so so some of the things that, that we do um, is you show them the scriptures, but you can also just discredit the Watchtower. Now, you're going to have a hard time doing that because they won't listen to you. Um, they're not allowed to know the history of the Watchtower. They're not allowed to uh, uh, you to tell them the history. I've just said, I just because they seem like a normal, reasonable person, not a, not a robot. And I said, can you just stop? Just you and me are just people here. Your organization, why won't you look back at its history? Isn't that logical? You should look back and see what it's done before, what it's said. Wouldn't you think that'd be a good idea? And they, they just won't, they just... They're not allowed to. They're not allowed to take a pamphlet from anybody else. They're not allowed to, to, to be just... And, and so it's very difficult because of that. But if you can, you know, you can tell them, you know, Jesus, you know the Watchtower said that Jesus was on earth already? Uh, and 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 because I would think... And I remember I was, I was I was in the house of two Jehovah's Witnesses and and uh, and one of our people had, had who who'd moved away had been studying with them and was confused and said, I want to see what turns right. I want you guys to talk in front of me. And so we debated and and praise the Lord, the person with us uh, sent them away and said, no, the, no. Christianity's right. You're, you're not right. And so praise the Lord for that. But I remember I asked them, I said, can I ask you guys a question? I said, do you believe the Watchtower is infallible? Can it be wrong? And they got furious. What kind of question is that? That has nothing to do with anything. I said, it's just a yes or a no. I said, I went to Bible college. They could be wrong. They're wrong on things. Can the Watchtower be wrong? Look, the, that, that is a distracting subject. It has nothing to do with anything. So I believe the Bible's infallible. You're putting your eternity in an organization of man. And you want to ask that question, just, just tell her. No, I don't believe it's infallible. I think it'd be wrong. Just tell her that. And she'll realize it. You, you know, you're facing all in a man. They said, you need to, this is not the subject. This is not what we're talking about today. And, and that's just a distracting. And they wouldn't. They wouldn't. And so it's difficult when you have that. And so I don't spend a ton of time on them normally. I, I move to the next person and try to find somebody who's ready to be saved. But just this lady yesterday, I repeated her about six times. Read Philippians 2. See what the name of every name is. 
and do that. And, 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 and I kept repeating that to her. And I'm hoping that she'll do it. Because sometimes, you and, and some, some have been saved, a Christian shook them because all they ever met was Christians who didn't know the Bible. And when they realize their own Bible disagrees with their doctrine, many times it makes them start saying, whoa, wait a minute. And you hope that happens. And that's what we're trying to do. And that's what we're trying to work out. And, uh, and that's, you try to shake them with the scriptures and do those things. And a few things. Um, down at the bottom, um, some other things that will help. I'm going to ask them how many gods there are. We went into that last week. They believe that there is one God, but they believe Jesus is a God and that Jehovah is the true God. Uh, that makes one plus one. Um, and it's very tough on them. And uh, that's a hard thing for them. Ask them, what is a name that brings salvation? Okay. They will tell you. Uh, and what they put it is, look, and they'll show you verses. And by the way, Jehovah, understand that. They want to go to that subject. Jehovah is one of God's names. And it's one of the most common names in the Bible because it's used so many times in the Old Testament. Okay. In Exodus, God does say, hey, um, before I was known by uh, other names, but now I'm a name, known by name Jehovah. And he used that name. And I believe it's a private name for uh, for Israel to use. Um, just the simplest thing about that is, number one, yes, Jehovah is used in the Bible uh, over 7,000 times. Absolutely. It is one of God's names, as is Elohim, which I don't even know that name, uh, as is other names that God uses. The most common in the New Testament is a generic term, theos. It just means God. Okay. Jehovah is never used a single time in the New Testament. Wouldn't you think if it was important, God would say, somewhere in the New Testament, <laughs> one time, uh, and, uh, and so, but he, he, he never does. And so they want to go to that and, and, and things like that. But one of the things you say, and they'll believe you have to know his name in, in, in order to be saved and, and, and not be generic, but uh, Acts chapter four tells us what the name of salvation is. And, uh, Acts chapter four, through a couple of verses here in verse 10 through 12. It says, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand before you. Now notice it mentions the name of Jesus. It says very specifically, uh, this is the stone which is set at naught, which the builders uh, of the builders, which has become the head in the corner. Verse 12, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. <laughs> Okay, that's why Romans 10, 13 says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. They'll say, that's Jehovah. They'll, t- they'll show you Romans 10, 13. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You got to call on Jehovah's name. <laughs> Romans 10, 9 says the name is talking about there. It's not Jehovah. That thou shalt confess thy mouth the Lord Jesus. <laughs> okay, and, and, and one of the hardest things you'll have with Jehovah's Witnesses in talking to them is... They'll show you what Romans 10, 13, you'll say, okay, which name is it talking about? Or they'll show you Acts 4, 12, you say, okay, which name is it mentioned? Let's look at verse 10. And they'll say, no, let's go to another passage. Because they have this very limited, narrow way of looking at the Bible, and just sometimes a half a verse, sometimes one verse, and they won't let you take it into context. They're trained to change the subject. And, uh, and so, but show them that. Show them the name you must call upon, the name that brings salvation, is the Lord Jesus Christ. Or show them in Philippians 2, 9 through 11, the name which is above every name. It says very, and by the way, they haven't changed that in their Bible. Uh, Philippians uh, 2. uh, Now, they changed some things in Philippians 2. Uh, They literally flip where where it says, uh, he thought not Robert Robert E. called equal with God. (laughs) <laughs> they totally changed that verse and says that he, he denied that he was equal with God, even though it clearly says he was. But the verses after that, where it says, where it says very clearly, it says, uh, God has given him a name, which is above every name, that in the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God, the father. And so, um, those are things that help you sometimes, uh, if they let you verse th- number three, let uh, discredit the watchtower, do it. Um, um, next, if they, Seem hard and re not, re not respond to Bible truth. Don't argue with them. Matthew 7, 6, don't catch your pearl before a swine. Proverbs all over says, don't rebuke a fool. You might try and, sh- and shake them if you can give them a scripture or two, and that's usually what I do. I just give them one or two. 
and just kind of just just clearly show them out of there. I know he's, you, I quote him in my Bible because it's the word of God. I show them out of their Bible to shake them up. I do both. But once you realize they're hardened, they aren't going to listen, they don't care, uh, they don't, they, they do, because what they do when you, they realize you know what you're talking about and you, you know how to get them out of their little narrow rut, they're out of there. They're going to bolt. Um, and so that's what they're going to do. And they will not continue. They, they are trained to do that. And they're trained to go back to their leaders and say, I heard this. What is the answer to this? Oh, okay. Thank you. I feel better. That's what they're trained to do. And so, um, and, and so, um, th- but uh, if you can, if you can shake them, do that. If they're so hard, they don't care, then go win the next person to Christ. Go witness their neighbor. Go witness to somebody else because uh, you can argue with them for two hours. They're not going to listen. Don't cast your pearl before swine. Next, very important, for 2 John uh, one ten. It's in there. It's in the paper there. So let's, let's go ahead and read that together. Ready? It's on the bottom of your paper, number five. Ready? If there come any unto you, read it with me, ready? If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him Godspeed. Okay? So, a couple things. Uh, it says there, don't let him into your house. Um, your house is a sacred, protected place. And letting a false prophet in your house is dangerous, okay? Um, I will. Um, and uh, let me, let me, there's a bunch of things. God's word is very carefully. I'll witness him at my doorstep all day long. Okay, we do that all the time. And, uh, and, and so we do that. And, uh, and, and, and we witness them. And then, uh, but not in your house. Don't let him in. That's what they want to do is come into your house and study with you. It's literally Satan and get in the door of your house. I mean, it's, you can't do that. Now, I want to say, so you never let anybody who's a, who's, who doesn't believe right in your house? No, we, we, had, we had, I think, 16 Muslims in our house for last Thanksgiving, and we're happy to do it. They weren't bringing their doctrine into my house. You see the difference? If a Jehovah's Witness is bleeding to death and you know, gets hit by a car in front of my house and I bring him inside and start treating him or something. That's, he's not bringing his doctrine. I'm helping him. Okay. Uh, uh, he's not, but I'm not going to let them come into my house and bring their doctrine. Okay. The Muslims wanted to learn about America's history and we were wanted to feed them and be close to them and be friends with them. And they weren't bringing their doctrine. We told them, how, we told them about how America started and, 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 and it was great. A wonderful, wonderful time with them and, 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 and nothing, but if they're coming to evangelize, they're not coming in. I talk to them, I'll talk to them at my door. And by the way, they'll eventually mark your door and not come back. Um, they, they keep they keep records and that stuff, and they won't come back. And uh, and so, um, but don't let them into your house. Neither bid them Godspeed. What's that mean? Bidding Godspeed is like, hey, hope everything your journeys are quick, and we don't want their journeys to be quick. We want their their car not to start. We want them not to get the next door. Uh, we don't want them harmed. Uh, we just we we don't want them to be blessed in their travels. Uh, we don't want everything to go good for them. Uh, we don't want them to get to more people. Uh, we don't. We don't want that. Uh, that's that's sometimes uh, what I'll do is uh, is I will um, talk to them. So I'm not talking to somebody else because they're not going to shake me. Okay, but we don't want them to. Don't bid them Godspeed. Don't say God bless you. Don't say that to to them. You don't want God to bless them. They're bringing false doctrine. I know it seems mean to the American tender. You got to be nice and to everybody and all that stuff. Be kind. If they're starving to death, feed them. But don't be any participant in their bringing false doctrine. Okay? You don't, you don't do that. You don't, you don't participate. You don't want them blessed. You don't give them any money. You don't do anything to help them along. You don't want to participate in their bringing false doctrine. And, uh, and so you do that. We love them. We want them to be saved. But also realize they're wolves. And they're going to destroy people. And so we don't want to participate and help them in any possible, possible way. And, and so uh, we don't do that. And uh, uh, many times I see them studying with somebody, the person is not, because uh, I run into them a lot because we do a lot of evangelism, they do a lot of evangelism. And so I run into them, and if I see them talking to somebody, witnessing them, or, or, or do, giving their gospel to somebody else, I'll go up and I will start witnessing the person they're witnessing to, or start witnessing to them. And I want them to see, hey, look, this guy knows the Bible better, and, and this guy has truth, and, and he keeps on trying to bring the context in. And by the way, context is their, ni- is their, is their nightmare. Okay, because you can change a part of a verse, but you can't change the context too much. Okay, and so they do not like context. And so we, we do it. And so we try to do that. And so don't bid them God speak. Don't let them into your house. Don't do those things. Next, speak the truth in love, Ephesians 4.15. Um, it says, but speak in the truth in love. When you're with them, you understand uh, they're bringing in damnable heresies, the Bible says, but love them. 
Love them. You can love somebody and disagree with them. Love everybody. Speak the truth. Don't say, you stinking, wicked, heathen. No, love them. So I, I, many times, look, I remember one time I, I had two Jehovah's Witnesses come to my door. And, and to be honest with you, we just I just completely devastated them biblically. <clears throat> and there was two ladies and they had two kids in the car. And they, they, I stood in the porch, they're trying to walk away. And I said, remember this, you are afraid to read a bunch of Bible verses and you know, you're proved wrong. You know, you are wrong. You, you're, you, it's obvious. And they, they, they started walking away and, and, and they, they, they started saying stuff about this. You'll find out when Jehovah judges you because you don't know his true name and all that stuff like that. And my wife went out after them and went and she started crying to them and said, you ladies know you're wrong. You were proven wrong in every single point with the Bible. She's weeping at them. And and she says, you have kids in that car who are going to be brought up with doctrine, and you just got proven wrong with the Bible. You need to change. You need to... She showed them love. And showed them, look, you have kids. You're wrong. You know you're wrong. You need to be saved. You need to come to Christ. Don't let your kids be condemned because you're afraid to admit you're wrong. And and, and that's good. And that's good. And, and that love uh, impacts people. They don't have that. They don't have the fruits of the Spirit. When they... When they see the biggest thing, and, and more common than people we see who are Jehovah's Witnesses who get saved when they're when they're older, is much more often very very common. And this is not true, for example, of Mormons, but of Jehovah's Witnesses is very true. Most Jehovah's Witnesses, when they grow up, leave. Who grew up in it? There's a lot of reasons for that. There's a lot of hypocrisy. There's a lot of uh, uh, a lot of weird anger and control. People are in cults, just so you know. Um, people are in cults who are controlled by the cults. They become weirdly controlling, okay? And they become they usually become very bad parents uh, because of that. And so they're not good parents generally. I hate to say that, but it's just what I've seen from talking to, and, and, and read and, and talked to. And there are, I'm sure there's wonderful Jehovah's Witness parents, okay? Um, but any kid who, who – anybody who let their kid die because they won't let them get a blood transfusion – you know, um, but, uh, but, and they will, by the way, they'll let their, their, their kid can bleed to death. They will not allow blood transfusion. They'll let the kid die first. Um, uh, and, and, and so, um, but, but I, I'm sure there's some good ones and there's some kind parents like there is of everything under the sun, but, uh, many of them leave when they get to be, uh, um, a little bit older. Those ones who grow up in Jehovah's Witnesses, when they hear the gospel, there's two kinds. There's the ones who knew something wasn't right and knew that wasn't right, but still want God. There's this, there's a group of them who just become nasty, bitter atheists. There's a lot of them who become Christians who grow up at Jehovah's Witnesses. Those ones, when I talk to them, the biggest thing that impacts them, they just melt when they come to a good Bible church because of the love there. And they see, boy, God loves me unconditionally. And these people love me. And I'm trying to earn my salvation. I'm trying to earn my God's favor, and this, and they they very much love that salvation. Love has a great impact, and uh, when you love people and show them that love, it has a great impact, and uh, it makes a big difference on them, and uh, and show them. Now I want to take it to one last verse, Second so Peter chapter three. I think one thing that really impacts them that they want to go into probably when you talk to them, the first thing they talk to you about if you talk to Jehovah's Witnesses, what happens to the world. You only have to go to one passage, okay? Um, they have a, I, here's the thing. Jehovah's Witnesses will tell you we study every verse in the Bible, okay? And I don't know if that's true. I know they do with the Watchtower. I don't know how they read this passage. Because whenever I read it with them, they have no idea that it's there. <laughs> I mean, they don't say, oh, I know about that. And what it really, they just, they're, they're just wide-eyed and blinking. Because they don't understand this passage, okay? Because this passage says what's going to happen to the world. The Jehovah's Witness doctrine is, is Jesus going to come back at Armageddon. He's going to destroy all the wicked who hate God, and he's going to destroy all of us. He's going to destroy everybody except for Jehovah's Witnesses at Armageddon, okay? That's the doctrine. And then this earth um, becomes paradise forever. And there'll be 144,000 in heaven that are already chosen. And then the rest of the Jehovah's Witnesses will live on this paradise earth forever. The line will lay down at the Lamb. Uh, I don't know. They don't read Revelation 20 where it gives a time frame of that, uh, of Isaiah 11 and the passages and, and stuff. But, but, but they don't know this world has to change. They don't understand this world is messed up. And this passage shows the whole world is completely destroyed if they are on it. 
okay? In their physical body, they're just, they're just, their doctrine doesn't work, okay? And so show them what happens in this world. Just, they'll say, well, I don't want to go to heaven. I want to live forever on earth. Look, the earth abides forever. Ecclesiastes 1. Look, the earth, earth uh, abides forever. Look, the meek shall inherit the earth. Matthew 5. And all these passages will take you to. And all you do is say, of course, yeah, the, 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 the world abides forever. Let's look what has to happen for it to be perfect and what has to happen to it. And you take them to 2 Peter 3. And, uh, and uh, verse, uh, just we'll read verses, uh, start at verse uh, 5. This, uh, let's do 6. Uh, whereby the, the, the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. Okay, so it's going to talk about, it's going to compare, by, by the way, water and fire. When Noah was here, the water, the, the world was, uh, was destroyed by water. Okay, verse uh, 7. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, and by the same world are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day with the Lord is with the th- as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us, word, not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. He's delaying his coming back to see more people saved. But the day of the Lord, which uh, will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Well, that's pretty, pretty bad for this world, okay? The, uh, the earth and all the works that are therein shall be burned up. Okay, it's pretty simple. Seeing then all these things shall be dissolved. Now, look how many different ways God says it. It's melted. The elements are melted. It's destroyed, Okay. It's dissolved. <laughs> okay. That means it's not in the same shape. Okay? Uh, when this is dissolved, at the end of the thousand-year reign, where the lion lays down at the lamb, everybody's got to get out of their physical bodies. The whole world and the universe is all melted down because it's sin cursed, the thorns and everything else. And God melts it all to remove the curse. And he makes, as Revelation 21 tells us, a new heaven and a new earth. Okay? Um, uh, verse 11, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hastening in the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Okay? <laughs> for nevertheless we, according to this promise, look for a new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteous. Everything you just read, Completely destroys your doctrine. <laughs> okay? It just does. And so uh, I take a passage, and that's usually in a conversation, they got to go at that point. And, uh, and because there's just, and by the way, you don't have to make an interpretation of it. You don't have to say this means this. And they'll say, well, here's what they'll do. You read something in your Bible, they'll say, well, they believe all of our Bibles are purposely corrupted, only their Bible is right. And they'll say, well, let me read it in my Bible. And you say, okay. Because the passage I showed you in here, you, you can have to read in their Bible. They revise it again in 2013. They still don't revise this stuff enough. Okay? And so um, that's the way to shake them and do that. All right. That's our lesson for today. Love them. Let's reach them when you can. If not, go to the next person. They are very difficult. You'll find much easier to reach other people.